Kukla and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's edition of Business Now. It's always a pleasure to have you follow us. My name is Daniel Malawa and uh, today's edition uh, is an exclusive interview in which I will engage a young man, uh, an architect by profession, uh, but now doing or trying to do exploits in the area of finance and uh, infrastructure. He is the chairperson of WealthNet Finance PLC, and his name is Nikoson Kumwenda. Mr. Kumwenda, thank you so much for joining us, and you're welcome. Thank you so much. Mm. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what's the state of affairs? Let's begin here. Uh, the state of affairs in uh, the financial sector that you, you apply business from WealthNet and Finance. Uh, that's the state of affairs in terms of where we're coming from and the outlook 2021. I would say Malawi is an, at an interesting position uh, in terms of uh, the finance industry. Uh, we can all agree that there have been, there, there's been a lot of issues uh, surrounding the, uh, the finance industry. We've had issues in parliament regarding the, the interest, uh, interest rates, uh, people complaining about interest rates. Uh, we as also business people in Malawi we are not excluded from that and the, for us we are also affected by uh, the finance industry so as wethnet finance we did a research to find out more on how the finance industry works and the, there are formal reports like the finscop survey of 2014 that shows in 2014 the adult population of um, 18 years and above only two percent had access to loans from the bank so if 98 percent of the population didn't have access to uh, to 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 to, to uh, say finance from the banks the normal way that we know that when we say finance in Malawi, we're talking of loans from our uh, from our banks then we for us we didn't see it as a problem but an opportunity to exploit so uh, basically uh, uh, malawi is at that position uh, finance inclusion is quite low compared to other countries. It's still low. It, it is still it, 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 it is still low, and we are we are much appreciative of the uh, mobile net uh, networks, uh, the mobile money wallets that are penetrating quite a lot, which is a positive development. But still more, there is a gap. If you you read the audited financial statement for Airtel Malawi, the recently listed company, that shows that uh, the rural population, which holds about 80% of the, the national population still has uh, not yet reached the level of uh, what we can call adequate uh, access to, uh, to, 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 to finance. So the gap coming, is wide. You're coming in to fix, to fix that gap to, or, or to fill that gap per se. As a young man coming into an industry that most young people, uh, your age, uh, my age, will find so challenging to, to venture into, uh, where did you get the the motivation and the inspiration to, to go into our finance? Each and every one of us use uh, money. We use finance. So if we shy away from uh, uh, the industry that holds our life, then I think something is, that something is missing. And as for now, I will not hide if you read the reports from Reserve Bank, about 50% of the bank assets are in the hands of uh, foreigners. It's like someone is keeping your pace which is a, an awkward position so you may complain but if the policies are not coming from locally you find out that the development can, uh, can cannot even work you talk of uh, uh, pension funds and the like who are the people that are guiding investments because we see pension funds in other countries you see huge housing developments that are coming from pension funds where uh, uh, where where is it for Malawi? So, uh, for much as the industry is challenging, but it's quite quite pivotal and it's quite important that uh, we should participate. Like for me, I'm not coming from the uh, finance background, but looking at the growing opportunities that are in, in finance industry, I couldn't resist but to come and solve uh, to solve the the problem of access to finance to make sure that local businesses have access yeah, to. But I was going to get there. Get finance for what, for example? Yeah, okay. Uh, let me just uh, give you uh, a, a, 
a brief background of where we are coming from. As with Net Finance, as we were starting, uh, we did the research of the uh, finance industry. And one of the issues that we found out, we analyzed the balance sheets of all the banks. And what we saw was uh, when the banks receive uh, the money from us, they invest in treasury bills. It's not wrong uh, because treasury bills are zero risk investment. For those who may not understand what treasury bills are, it's like lending money to government. So the government uh, borrow from the population, local as well as international, for its development uh, activities. We have heard about uh, budget deficits. For them to cover those budget deficits, they borrow. So, uh, and if you read the financial stability report of Reserve Bank 2019, it will show you that uh, when they did the exposure of banks, uh, uh, six of nine banks were vulnerable if five of their top, top borrowers would default on their loans. So this tells us two things. It tells us that uh, our banks invest more resources in government as well as their top borrowers. Now, if this happens, it starves capital to uh, small and medium enterprises. When I, say it, uh, when I say it starves capital, that's where uh, the critical part is. We're, nowadays, we are talking of um, uh, creating uh, uh, one million jobs. But who creates jobs? These are small and medium enterprises. If you finance these people, they already have trade. They already know what to do. It's like you're putting gasoline in, in, into what they are already doing. So if this, if it, this uh, population, the small and medium enterprises, are starved of capital, the banks are giving money to top business people, and the government, then we are killing our nation. Now you and now you came in as Worthnet Finance to to cover that gap in in the, in the SME sector. Exactly. Um, the SME sector that starved of finance, yes. and now you have uh, eighty percent of the population that's not banked, and now just in twenty in twenty twenty came COVID, came COVID nineteen. What did COVID do? Uh, given these prevailing uh, negative factors that we have. Uh, discussed and now came COVID. What did COVID do to, to this industry? Yeah, uh, COVID has been quite challenging. I think uh, all of us now are, are feeling the heat. Uh, like uh, at my workplace, we have members of staff suffering from it and we have very close relations, some at church or our places of worship that are, that are affected by, uh, by the pandemic. And uh, uh, we had a, I would call it a partial shutdown where business was slow. Uh, the hospitality industry, because of travel restrictions, almost uh, there is no revenue coming from, uh, from from that side. So basically, if you don't have revenue, even if you have finance facility, you cannot service them well. But uh, let's look at how other countries are handling the situation. In America now, there's been a huge debate on giving uh, the vulnerable population about 600 US dollars, or is it uh, 2,000 US dollars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but in our case, what are we doing? Because this is the time that we can come forward to the co uh, stimulating the, the, the economy to make sure that the, con the economy sti still ticks. So much the, the COVID has hit us hard, yes, and it has affected a lot of business, yes, but I think uh, it's up now to us on how we react both at government level and the, uh, in the private sector as well. Uh, share with us more, what else do you do in Wealthnet? Well, uh, Worthnet is uh, under, uh, uh, like for me, I work for Voma Group of Companies as a uh, Chief Executive Officer, and uh, Worthnet is a subsidiary of, uh, of Voma uh, 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 Group of Companies. Uh, we actually invest in uh, interesting businesses. Uh, we invest our resources in businesses that have significant impact uh, to the national economy and the businesses that create value and worth to all our stakeholders. When we, I say stakeholders, I mean our members of staff, our customers, our shareholders, and everyone that is involved in us. And our investment philosophy is wealth creation. We want to create wealth. And the, uh, uh, for Wethernet Finance, we, uh, for, uh, we, we have several uh, companies under, and, under the group. You've heard about so the Green Villages, Sustainable Urban Land and Shelter Development Consultants Limited. Its main role is to provide land. You know, in Malawi, uh, there is high rate of urbanization. People are coming into urban areas, but they don't have anywhere to stay. And the government is slow to release land to the population. So what happens is that you have 
growing informal settlements, squatter settlements, where services, the life is basically horrible. The ambulances cannot access uh, in, the, in, in the location. But look around, we have a lot of land that each and every one of us can have land. So as the, as the Green Villages, we saw it fit that uh, 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 as part of creating wealth, as part of giving wealth to the people, we should be able to provide one basic thing that is a good accommodation. And it starts with the good land in a good, uh, in a good location. You know, the value of, of your property, again, is dependent on where you build it. If you have a nice house in a squatter settlement, there's no value there. But if you, you, you build in an area which is well serviced, water, electricity, and you have a good neighborhood, quite secure, you value, your, your property appreciates. So we are starting from uh, that base. And the, again, let me take this opportunity to say, why do you do land things? And at Westland, again, we, we, we promote that Malawians should have access to land because of one of one of the one because of this reason. I would, I would say, if you go to a bank today, I want to access a, a finance facility. The first thing they would question is that you need to secure that facility. And most of Malawians, because we don't have assets. Uh, like like landed property, then we miss out on the on the opportunity that that that, that, that comes with the, with, uh, with with that. So as as the, for with it finance, we would like to make sure that as many Malawians as possible have at least a house they would call their own in Malawi. Wow, yeah. So if they have that house, now we can be looking at how can we finance them to build a house while they have a security at hand. Mundu sanganya mule property kai kai guri kuchoka nayo where the where where the property is that's where that's where it is. And that's one of the pathetic pathetic things that we have with our local banks. If you go to a bank today and they ask to say uh, I have bare land. They would say we don't give facilities to bare land. You mean a bare land in area 43 doesn't have value. So those are ridiculous things that we're experiencing now with our, with, our, with our finance sector, and we are here to sort them out. Mm. You're here to sort them out. Uh, you are now also developing into a more of a banking corporation. Yes. Share with us more about uh, that direction you are taking at Wealthnet Finance. Yeah, uh, uh, you may have heard that recently we've gotten a, a deposit taking license from the Reserve Bank. What it means that now we'll be able to uh, to to take deposits from the from the public, so that's the that's the one I was I was talking about to say, if our federal institutions collect these deposits, they only think of now, uh, they invest in treasury bills short term, and the and the uh, the, the, the the money market. Yes, uh, these deposits are people's money, and we 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 are cautious of making sure that whatever happens, that money should never should never get lost yeah but we are also looking at i'll give the example of say for example the the, the the pension industry you are going to access your money when you are you're 60. now you're only at 31. why should i put that money in a short-term uh, short-term investment in treasury bills for 91 days it's ridiculous so that's this these are the kinds of resources our other countries the other countries are using to build uh, multi-story houses. We don't have many flats in here. The population is growing, but we are, we are not accommodating our population well. But we have the money around. But those who are making decisions in regard to investment of that money, that is a big challenge. So there, that's where we, we need to have control as Malawians. So the coming in of Westland... You, you, you will ideally invest in property? Not necessarily, not, not only in property. There are a lot of avenues uh, that we, are, we, we, uh, we plan to invest, but the basic, uh, the basic, the basic aspect is to make sure that the people's money are secure, they are safe, they are in any way we cannot lose them. And exactly, exactly my point. How, how safe are the deposits from the clients that you are, that you have? Uh, the the safety of the deposits. No, when with when, you, can people trust you with their deposits? Yeah, okay. The trust comes with uh, uh, with experience. That's why for now, we cannot say that we uh, we have experience, but uh, we've dealt with the, uh, we have the groups we call them wealth creation business group, and uh, that's one of the 
the motivating factors that came to us to make sure that we are a deposit taker. So much as we are now we are entering the industry now, but we already people that already trust us. And I think more and more people will be learning. I think you've heard about our conferences and the, all the issues that we do. Do you intend to become a fully fledged banking corporation in the near future? Yes, actually. And we are also going to uh, 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 we are also going to list on Malawi Stock Exchange. The, the, uh, that's our direction we are, we are taking. If we had all the money is around, uh, we could go straight to get the banking license. That's where we are going. And the, uh, one of the reasons we are doing this is that we first want to build our, our customer base, the trust we are talking about. They have to deal with us to, 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 to make sure that, no, we are dealing with a credible institution here. We are dealing with a trustworthy institution here. So that's our first step. And the other step is we want Wethernet Finance to be owned by as many Malawians as possible. And we are going to list it on uh, uh, Malawi Stock Exchange. As for now, that's why it is called Wethernet Finance Public Limited Company because we want as many Malawians to buy shares in the company and to own it. Yeah. Sometime in 2020, 2019, about six banks were going to close in Malawi. So in essence, banks are underperforming in Malawi. Isn't that a risky area that you want to delve into? Uh, um, uh, not, not necessarily. Okay, the, the difference I was talking about, the, uh, it's just the simulation, the financial, financial stability, the quality high exposure, so they just simulate, but it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they, are, they, they, are, they, are, they are corrupting. Yeah, but then, uh, uh, you know, one of the safest industries, I would say, uh, is the banking industry because of the strong supervision that comes from Reserve Bank. You don't play around. There are, there are fees, there are penalties there, and if you're not, uh, you are not performing well, they can take you out. So... Uh, this should build, we have a very strong uh, regulatory environment in Malawi. They are doing their job. And uh, uh, let me give them a picture, not as a, a, a police, but they also support to say, you can, they don't come to penalize you if, before they warn you. They warn you and uh, then if you are not uh, complying to whatever they are saying, then they can come to penalize. So the regulatory environment is very good. That's why we see our, our, our financial stability is, is quite good in Malawi, yeah. I mean, you were telling me earlier, you intend to acquire banks in Malawi. When do you intend to do that? Yeah, that's part of our, part of our strategy. Uh, our coming in into the banking industry, uh, we are foreseeing that some banks will not have customers. So they would either choose to close or give it to us. So we are taking that direction. But again, that's a, a positive development because when you have big institutions, stable institutions that supports people, then that's what is desired rather than having so many banks that are uh, doing really not having much impact on, uh, on, on, on the economy. So our aim is to build really big, giant institutions. Yeah. You earlier discussed uh, the issue of borrowing and savings. These are things not so, not so prominent in Malawi. People don't, people don't save, for example. And mostly we see a culture where we borrow to consume. I mean, it starts with uh, state authorities. We borrow to consume. Yeah. Uh, is there a way that narrative can change in Malawi? Yeah, that actually, that's where we are. Uh, we are, we are very much. That's why our, that's why I said our investment principle is worth creation. If you're spending more than you're earning, uh, believe you me, that's straightforward. You're going to be poor. Yeah. So, even look at the reports that the RBM gives for the government uh, financing. You would find out that the government is spending more than what they can correct in taxes. Uh, and maybe they are spending more in uh, assets that, that are not, uh, uh, that are not uh, uh, producing uh, uh, income. So if we are talking of Malawi as a poor nation, just look at those reports. They will tell you that, hey, we are spending that we are earning. So that even goes to individuals. That's why I think I, I, I really feel uh, very sorry, to be honest, with some of the finance institutions. You know, there are two types of financing. There is poverty-creating financing and wealth-creating financing. 
let me start by the the the, the, the poverty creating financing you would find out that uh, many civil servants as i'm talking now they are highly indebted uh, uh, you would find out that uh, there are systems the mechanisms that uh, almost uh, there is zero risk in collect, uh, collecting those loans but you would find out the interest are at 72 percent and some are even much higher than that so you tend to wonder to say uh, is this kind of uh, loans uh, designed to give wealth to Malawians or is designed to rip Malawians off? So we are at, at, at that stage now where uh, most, most individuals, most uh, even business are highly indebted. But it's up, uh, up to us to reverse now. So when we talk about wealth creation, uh, the, 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 the uh, wealth creating loans, what we mean is you only have to borrow when you have something to invest that money to give you more than what you can pay in the interest. So the aspect that, that you are talking uh, of borrowing to consume, that would, would, would only result into poverty. But if we can borrow hugely, say for example, in Malawi now we have uh, the, 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 the challenge of electricity. Uh, you know, we can, we can borrow hugely to create, say, generate uh, power. When we generate power, it would mean uh, people would have continuous work. Nowadays, in, in most of the tra trading centers, people are, are, are stopping welding, the fridges are down because there's no power. Eh? We are losing out on the economy. So if we invest hugely, say, in the energy sector, you would find out that the, div the dividends are way more. It's like your... your, your what you've borrowed, you can actually uh, repay the interest as well as any more on that one. So what we encourage at Westnet is only borrow when that loan, whenever you are going to invest it, it will give you more than what you're paying on the interest. Then you're growing financially. Then, then that's what we call worth creating loans. But and I mean, I, I guess that, that, that's the wisdom you share with uh, the people that are, what do you call them, members? Worth, cre worth creation. No, yes, actually, what do you, what happens there? Whew. <laughs> I, I, I would wish as many uh, uh, business people as possible to join these wealth creation business group uh, groups because uh, that's where that's where uh, real issues about wealth creation are discussed. Let me just give you a background to say why did we start uh, wealth creation business groups and. Uh, and uh, what was the methodology that we used to come up with this wealth crea creating business group? I've already told you about the uh, the the poverty creating loans. Most of the people got accustomed to getting loans for consumption uh, without investing, and uh, people uh, as I, I already uh, alluded to that uh, when people are told by a financial institution uh, give us security, they don't have security. So we are starting there to say, how can we support people to start realizing on how to start building uh, those securities like a building block? It's not a get-quick-rich uh, scheme, but building blocks on which you can, uh, uh, you can rely on. So we did, a, we did a, 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 our research. We studied the Grameen Bank of India, which we found out that it works more for, for the low-income uh, income people. But we wanted uh, the, the model to work for all income groups. And uh, we also studied what I would call the sake of trust. Uh, uh, most Indians, uh, people of Indian, uh, Indian community here in Malawi, they lend each other uh, uh, huge sums of, mal uh, of money just on trust. And you cannot break that trust because if you're not trusted, the next time you need that kind of facility, you will not get it. So we, we mixed up, uh, uh, we, we tried to take good ideas from various, and again, we took uh, the ideas of uh, Banking Conde, the village savings, on how they work and how are their, um, their shortfalls. So we try to solve all the shortfalls and make sure that uh, our product is the product that uh, has considered all those aspects to make sure that it benefits uh, 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 the, the customers. Yeah, so we created the wealth creation, what we call wealth creation business group, a sake of trust. And Wealth Creation Business Group is basically a business, uh, uh, a group of between 7 to 15 individuals that come together. Uh, they save their money together and, uh, they, uh, and uh, they, they lend each other from the group. So Wealthnet comes in to support them to create a constitution which every member signs. 
and they keep they provide rules on how the group is managed uh, when a person borrows from that group what kind of interest should they pay so they define it so the good thing is that uh, at Wethend we have state of the art uh, 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 I, I, ICT uh, we, we've designed a specifically uh, uh, designed the co-banking system that uh, works with the, on how to manage this group so when a group decides to say our interest is X then we can set it up in the system so whoever gets a loan from that particular group gets at that particular that particular interest yeah so this uh, this uh, uh, these groups learn in circles say of 12 months uh, others are 18 months 24 months uh, and the like and the, one of the advantages is that uh, when the group is starting Wethnet puts in money into the group to make sure that they have somewhere to start and the uh, Wethnet also when the group uh, the group on each and every month basis, when the group saves, Wethen puts 20% of their savings, savings into their group, like increasing the pool of their capital. So you can see that when they borrow each other from the group, uh, Wethen also supports to make sure that uh, member savings are protected. Uh, we assess the loan for, for the person who is borrowing. And as, as I'm talking now, we have a situation whereby some people started uh, borrowing at 500,000. Uh, next time they are at 800, at, mi uh, at a million. Now people are doing 10 million, 20 million, which is very exciting to us. That means people are understanding what cre wealth creation is all about and they are uh, uh, espousing the growth. So that's actually what we mean by that. So if a person is now playing with 20 million, do you think they can fail to buy a house? Simple. That's right. Yeah. Um, Mr. Nicholson, we are out of time, but thank you so much you could make time to join us. That was uh, Mr. Nicholson Kumwenda. Uh, he is chairman at uh, Worthnet Finance, and uh, it was a pleasure to have him on the show. Thank you so much you could make time to join us. Thank you. And from me, Daniel Mawawa, and the rest of the crew, it's bye-bye, and uh, we'll see you next time.